Welcome to part two of how to paint this painting. Uh, 40 by 50 centimeters uh, on linen canvas acrylic painting. Uh, okay, let's go. So here we go now, moving from the red to the yellow. Using the finger as a tool, of course, for a little blending. Feel the canvas is a, uh, this painting is a little bit of uh, many issues going on here. So I'm just adding color down to, to push me into thinking of or reacting, feeling what the painting needs more of. Different lines, different uh, strokes of the paintbrush to encourage some kind of other, uh, bring out some other kind of element that might be um, showing itself in the painting. Putting things down, removing things, putting things down to discover maybe new directions. We must try in order to move to the next level. Remove things with the rag, the wet rag. Sometimes just an interesting combination of paints and textures, the colors, in an area can stimulate a new direction. Try a new color. So back to the yellow. Slightly wider brush. Bit of a right angle there. Straight through the red now with the yellow, the lighter yellow. Blending what's left of the red if it's still wet. It's very hot, so the paint dries very quickly. Underline the word very. It's uh, mid 30s, summer, in the middle of in Shanghai. AC going on in the other room, but uh, doesn't quite extend out to this balcony. So I've got the fan going. So I scratched in some uh, charcoal there. Quite aggressively remove the paint of the red. I'm filling it back in with the red brush, fixing any of the loose skinned areas that were scratched away. Many emotions occur during a painting, sometimes a little anger, frustration. So here I'm now adding the yellow. You can see the paint's flying off the edge of the canvas there. settle down on some position where I'm going to feel some inspiration to continue. Lay down some green now, like an avocado. This is the process of abstract painting. I like David Cohen's, uh, he's an art writer and critic. I like his quote. He said, an abstract painter Sometimes there are recognizable things in the work, figures and what have you, but the issue of abstract art is not whether there is anything recognizable in it or not. It's the issue of whether the artist is approaching painting in a phenomena logical way or in an observational way. And if it's primarily phenomena logical, if they're interested in things like dualities, sensations in the abstract, then to me that's what makes them an abstract painter. 
There are other dualities that present themselves, like light and shade, for instance, and rough and smooth. So any binary force that you can name that operates in an abstract or visual level finds its way into an abstract painting. So that's a mouthful, but the phenomenological, meaning when things happen in the painting, you go with it. And here, now when we look at what I'm doing, I'm really making a big change here. I didn't paint the canvas white completely to start again, but that is a massive amount of dark green there, sap green, to really clean the slate, so to speak. This must be done sometimes. I do like that eye element, what uh, that, that uh, light blue, dark blue, and um, section top right there. So I've avoided that, but the rest of it really was uh, a bit of a mess, maybe uh, at this at that stage that I was at. So I had to just recalibrate by just putting on the big sap green section. Okay, remove some with the palette knife and the rag. Add some orange in there. That's a nice color. Complements the dark green. Try some brush strokes that are going to be interesting. Surprising. Brush strokes um, to mix it up. Breathe some new life into the painting. Draw a circle with the charcoal. What can we do with that? That's a big putty knife there. This is a quite a small canvas. I am used to working on bigger canvases as well. Um, maybe I'm in more of a mood for a big canvas uh, coming up in the future. Uh, right now I'm working on this uh, smaller format. This is part of the process of working out painting and I mean you will find paintings that have been completely covered over and repainted on top when look through uh, devices where they can read different layers so this is uh, not uncommon for painting, paintings to go through major changes throughout the process of adding and removing. So the painting does not look anything like it did a short time ago. So here we are removing now, moving forward of course. with the uh, removing of some of the paint now, which does blend the paint too, so it can look interesting. Working with acrylic paint is, uh, is good uh, in the sense that it uh, very easily uh, removed with the water, uh, soaked rag, so long as it's not too hot. Um, it doesn't last as long as oil, but it's uh, less stinky, you know, the fumes, of course, from the oil paint. There are pluses and minuses to both, but uh, I favor the acrylics.
obviously, uh, or not so obvious. I don't have any plans for the painting when I first started the painting. Um, I have no preconception of what I'm going to do, what I'm going to paint. Um, I just go with the flow. Okay, reset. Now the painting has gone through some change. I've rotated the canvas. I probably took a break. Had some food. Felt better. Get back to it in a slightly more calm mood. Less agitated is always good for focus. So I'm working with the red now in a slightly more detailed fashion with that brush and doing the uh, doing the black now. I picked up a from this angle here you can see it looks like a bit of a a nose coming down there from the top right to the middle. Not sure if you can see that, but that's what I'm starting to see here. So I've put in a little black above the red there, which uh, might be a, a reference to an eye. The left side could also be looked at as an eye from the beginning or a cave or very interesting pocket of light and life there on the left. I've left that. I see there could be some kind of an interesting uh, creature living in the bottom right there. I start to see things emerging from the painting. slightly. different sections. Adding a little bit of light to the top of the nose and around the tip. fan of pure abstract. I like to see a little bit of something coming out of the canvas. Um, when I say pure, I, I, you know, we're trying to define something that is uh, undefinable in a way. But I like to see some kind of images popping through, coming out of the painting in an abstract form. So I held up the paint there, as you know, hold up the paint to see how it's going to look on the canvas. So you can touch a little in area with the, the color just to see how it is going to fit. So I tried a little yellow there. Touching up the little creature here that I described earlier, bottom right, our little furry friend. Curious, accompanying the big nosed person there.
student, somebody who studied under uh, Willem de Kooning, Pat Pasloff. She's a great, was a great painter. I like her, uh, her quote when she said, uh, always in art, you want to make a surprise. And you need to be surprised yourself, and you need to surprise your viewers. This is almost one way of tricking yourself. I find that interesting. I found that interesting when I read that, when I heard that. The element of surprise adds interest in the painting. Not something so straightforward and conceptual or formulaic. Something abstract is much more tantalizing. the brush and the strokes and the colors playing with the green close to the red and the and the blue this is around the eye of the nosed element that's in the painting. Trying to make the uh, green section into a possible other element. Maybe a dual element involved. It could be this, it could be that. see Picasso doing one of his paintings and they uh, did a line art thing live on uh, glass and uh, at first it emerged as a as a as a fish and then as he progressed it turned into a chicken uh, so you could see a fish or you could see a chicken from the very same picture so I, I always thought that was interesting A little bit of white to close out this part. And we'll continue with the next part. And that concludes part two. If you'd like to see the final part, click the link below and we'll see you there. Okay.